Hey, this is Gary, and welcome back to the channel. I'm working on a new body for my Fisher Space Pen. In the last episode, I turned some of these rusty chains into these finished bars of wrought iron. And in this episode, I'm going to be taking those two bars and first turning one into the cap and the other into what I'm calling the cartridge keeper. Before I start working on the cap, I need to set my compound slot to the correct angle to cut the external taper on the cartridge keeper. I need to match the internal taper and the external tapers as precisely as I can. To make the internal taper, I'm using a set of reamers. There's a roughing reamer to hog out as much material as possible, and a finishing reamer to create a smooth surface finish. My compound slide has to be set to an angle of 1.4908 degrees to match the taper of my reamers, but my compound slide doesn't have that amount of accuracy in the readout. To get the 1.4098 degrees, I'll be drilling a hole, making a taper with the reamers, and then referencing off that taper to set my compound slide. This will actually probably be more accurate because I'm pretty sure my cheap set of reamers doesn't actually have an angle of 1.4908 degrees, so by referencing off the taper that it actually makes, I'll be able to machine the cartridge keeper precisely to the angle that the reamer will actually make. Now that I have that hole drilled, I will start out with the roughing reamer. To keep pressure on the reamer and to ensure that it goes straight into the hole, I'm using a spring-loaded tap guide. As the reamer advances into the hole, I will need to adjust the position of the tap guide so that it maintains pressure on the reamer. These tapers I'm using are called Morse tapers, invented by Stefan A. Morse in the 1860s as a reliable way to hold machine tools together. They have widely been adopted with several different sizes standardized. They work on the principle of self-holding friction. When inserted together, the internal and external tapers almost wedge together. The same taper is used on the tail stock of my lathe to hold the tooling it uses. The only risk when using a Morse taper is that if inserted together too hard, it can almost become locked together permanently and will need to be punched out. It takes quite a bit of time to get the taper as deep as I want. The deeper the taper goes into the hole, the slower the reamer removes material. The taper is now going to the hole far enough for me to set the angle of my compound slide. I'll switch out the roughing reamer for the finishing reamer to smooth out the surface finish. There isn't a lot of material to remove since I'm just trying to make the surface finish smoother. After just a few minutes, I'm ready to set the angle of my compound slide. To be able to tell when my compound slide is set to the same angle as the taper, I mount an indicator in one of my quick change tool holders. I'll take the tip of the indicator, set it on the inside of the taper, and start running the compound slide up and down the taper. I'm looking for the indicator to show no change in measurement to tell when the compound slide is set to the correct angle. Any changes in measurements means that the compound slide is deviating away from the angle of the taper. The compound slide is now set to the correct angle. Removing the scrap steel, I can grab the first piece of raw iron and mount it in the lathe. I will first be drilling this hole in the iron. Starting out as always with my trusty center drill, I drill a new center hole and clear out most of the material with a quarter inch drill. When drilling the hole to the final size, I want the depth to be relatively precise. I don't need it down to a thousandth of an inch accuracy, but within 10 to 20 thou is plenty good enough. To be able to achieve this accuracy, I first set the tail stock in my lathe to read 3 eighths of an inch sticking out. Grab a larger parallel that is too big to use in my mill, and pinch that parallel between the tip of the drill and the face of the material before locking my tailstock in place. When I remove the parallel, I can then advance my tailstock so that it reads half an inch, which means that the tip of my drill should be right at the face of the iron. Adding some cutting oil, I finish drilling that hole to 1.875 inches deep. Since most of the material is removed already, this hole goes pretty quickly. The only tricky bit is to remember to add half an inch to the measurement when reading off the tailstock. I'll now be making the taper here on the inside of the cap. Once again, I'm using a tap follower and I'll start out with the roughing reamer to clear out most of the material. To make sure I don't overshoot the size of the taper, I set my caliper to the diameter at the opening of the hole in my CAD model. After checking the progress I've made so far, I can see I still have a bit of material to remove before I can switch to the finishing reamer. Going back with the roughing reamer, I keep removing little bits of material before checking again and going back and removing more material. This time when I check the diameter, I can see that the size is almost perfect. Switching over to the finishing reamer, I will finish out this hole. That's all it took to get the hole to the final size. I finished all the machining in this setup, but before I can start working on this end of the cap, I need to cut off the excess material, so I take the bar out of the lathe and apply some layout fluid to mark where to cut off the material at. I set my height gauge to 2 and a quarter inches and scribe a line all the way around the iron before cutting off the excess material on the bandsaw. This little section I will need later on, so I'm going to put it in a safe place so I don't lose it. Going back to the lathe, I remount the cap and face the end of the bar until I have reached the scribe line. I will first be drilling this hole that will be later tapped for a 1032 thread. After starting the hole with a center drill, I drill all the way through the cap with a number 21 drill. 
Making this a through hole is my safeguard so that I can drive the cap off later on if the taper gets stuck. This quarter inch hole is what will locate the clip screw in the cap. Using the parallel trick, I touch off my drill on the end of the bar before drilling the hole to a quarter of an inch deep. To make the 1032 threads, I decided to try using a tap follower and a tap wrench. Usually I just hold the tap in the drill chuck, but I think this is supposed to be a more proper way to tap a hole in the lathe. As far as machining goes, the cap is done. I can clean off the layout fluid and inspect my work. I'm very happy with how the Morse taper turned out, as well as the threaded pocket in the back of the cap. Setting the cap aside, I can mount the second section of iron in the lathe to make the cartridge keeper. I designed the taper to end at this shoulder here. It would have been easier to just have the taper go all the way to the outside of the keeper, but I think this will look better. The taper stem will end up being about 3 quarters of an inch long. To make sure that I don't machine away too much material, I use my edge scribe to mark a line that is 3 quarters of an inch away from the end of the bar. Now I can start machining the taper and making sure to stop just short of that line. Up until this point I've been very careful to machine these parts as close to my design as possible. Now however I'm machining more for a desired look and not to the design dimensions. When I think the stem is getting close to the final size, I reach for the cap instead of reaching for my calipers. Checking the fit, I'm getting close to the necessary dimension regardless of the design dimension. After a final skim pass, I once again check the fit with the cap. The gap is 50 thousandths of an inch wide, which is exactly what I wanted it to be. But I'll be honest here, and I didn't get that right on the first try. This took quite a bit of work to get the fit right. I overshot the fit I was going for multiple times and kept having to move the taper down the bar until finally I nailed it, and then I shortened the stem to the correct length. Before taking the keeper out of the lathe, I champ for the end of the file. Just like with the cap, I'm going to apply some more layout fluid so I can mark out the overall length on my surface plate, cut off the excess length on the bandsaw, remount it on the lathe, and face the end of the bar to the scribe line. Now I'm on the home stretch of this part. There are three holes I need to drill and one thread I need to tap. Starting with this hole where the back of the cartridge will go, I will use a 4.8mm drill and drill down to a depth of 1 and 7 eighths of an inch. A quick test fit makes sure the cartridge will fit into the hole. It would be a shame if I did all this work and the cartridge didn't fit. This will be the next hole I'll be drilling, which is a pre-drilled hole for the 5 16 24 thread I'll be tapping later on, as well as relieving as much weight as possible. Using a 9 seconds drill, I make this hole 1.5 inches deep. The final hole I will be drilling is this short hole here. This will be the locating hole for the grip section I'll be making later on. I drill to a depth of 1 quarter of an inch deep. With the three holes I need drilled drilled, all that is left to do is to tap the 5 16 24 threads. Instead of using a tap guide and a tap wrench, I went back to just holding the tap and the drill chuck. In my model, the threads only go down about a half an inch into the cap, but I'm just going to go as far as I can into the body until the tap bottoms out. This is just extra, and I mean extra insurance, that I have enough threads. With that, all the machining on the cartridge keeper is done. I think the taper looks great, as well as the drilled and tapped holes. The fit between the cap and the keeper is better than I expected to. I still need to etch both of these parts so the grain structure of the raw iron is exposed, but that will be in a future episode. Thank you as always for spending a little bit of time with me, and I look forward to seeing you the next time I'm in the shop.